welcome you, Clemson, South Carolina, for today's ACC softball matchup as the Tigers are looking for the sweep against the North Carolina Tar Heels. We welcome you inside the booth, Bryce Kuhn alongside Scott Whitlock. And Scott, this team in Clemson has bounced back in a fantastic way, and they're starting to gain some more momentum. The doubleheader sweep that they endured at the hands of Duke eight days ago may have been one of the best things to happen to this young ball club. They were they were in the midst of a 17-game 17, 17 winning streak when that happened, but they now have come back, regained their composure, played very well the last two games against Duke, and have been absolutely dominant thus far in the North Carolina series. Yeah, they've definitely made a statement this weekend trying to get back right on track as we take a look at what happened in that doubleheader yesterday. Did you take a look here in game one, Scott? It was timely hitting and phenomenal outing in the circle. It all started with Thompson in the circle. She did a great job and then she got backed up by some timely hits. Right here, there's Abby Stewart leaving the ballpark and an enthusiastic fan leaving the ground. <laughs> Yeah, I think Clemson's doing it very well. And then over in game two, they kind of changed the script. They wanted a different way. This time they went with a long ball. Yes, Keller hit her first two home runs of her career, and she did that in front of some absolutely great pitching from you-know-who, Valerie Cagle. As you see, she does what Cagle does. And we've talked about this before. This Clemson team is starting to peak at the right moment. You talked about what they did. As you look and you kind of see what they're doing, it's exciting to see what Clemson has to offer. Game two, game three, we're getting ready for game four as the Tigers look for the sweep. As we take a look at how the Tar Heels will send their starting lineup out here, you look at this lineup, and I think it's important to see this team can hit, but they haven't shown it really so well this season or this series. They haven't in this series, but you got to bear in mind they're coming off of a 17-day layoff due to COVID. And one thing I know that Donna Papa and the Tar Heels want to do today is try to get some offense going because, quite frankly, in the first three games, it's been a mismatch. Well, they're going to have to do it against one of the best, not only on this team and on this field right now, but in the ACC as you get a look at Valerie Cagle in the circle. You talked about earlier, Scott, she's been fantastic. She is just having an outstanding year. One of the better two-way players, not only in the conference, but in the country, and starts us out with a strike. And we're underway here in South Carolina as we look at the Georgia native, Bree Stubbs, leading it off. And you talked about the offense, Scott. I think it's going to be important for them to score early. Yes, it, you know, it's always a big advantage to your pitching. It's a big advantage to your team if you can get out and get ahead and play from the front. But... Uh, like I said, so far in this in this uh, series, Clemson's pitching has kind of had their way with the batting order of North Carolina. North Carolina love to establish some confidence here early on. As we Stubbs, Middleton, and Burkhart, the first three guaranteed to face Cagle here in the top of the first. And Cagle working ahead. Cagle's tendency is to actually get better as the game goes on. Uh, on Thursday, she did a terrific job of staying ahead in the count, and she backed it up by doing it again yesterday. She's got an early 1-2 count here. This is over the right side. And one gun. That's a good way to start for the Tigers and Valerie Cagle. Yep, if you're a pitcher, happiness is a ground ball. I, I'm just telling you, ground balls are great things to occur. And when you talked about what Cagle has to offer in the circle, she's backed up by a team that you talked about it with me a little bit early on in Clemson. There's some things they want to, you know, fix on the defense, but it's a sound defensive team. Yep, they're they're very, you know, they're very experienced, but they also, you know, need to get some things cleaned up. Uh, they got a couple of seniors over there on the left side. As Destiny Milton fouls this one out of play. But, uh, you know, you talk so much about the strikeout in Cagle and the power pitching that she displays. Well, I'm going to tell you, ground balls, I mean, one and two and three pitch at bats are great. <laughs> it's great for the confidence and also for the bats. You can get the offense out back out there sooner. Yes. So we get a look at Middleton. Two sophomores to start the first two for North Carolina. And North Carolina is also missing a, a weapon offensively today and on the mound for that, for that matter. Their very fine pitcher, Brittany Pickett, went down with an injury in yesterday's game, game one. And uh, it doesn't look like she's available today. So somebody's going to have to step up and try to help the Tar Heels get their offenses cranked up. Yeah, North Carolina going to have to look elsewhere. And some offense by committee. Here's a nice little base hit. It'll be the two-hole hitter, Middleton, puts a base runner on for North Carolina. And that was a great job of hitting by Middleton. She did not try to do too much with that pitch. 
She hit it to where, you know, she hit it in the zone in which it was thrown. And now she's out there at first base. And uh, North Carolina's got some promise. And their hottest hitter is coming to the plate. And Christina Burkhardt, you see right there, she just drove that ball in the 5-6 hole. You get a look at Burkhardt right here. This is the kind of player you want runners on in front of the three-hole hitter for the Tar Heels. And I would not be surprised to see Middleton go. A lot of times a coach wants to do anything they can to jump start an offense. And Middleton has good speed. And North Carolina's struggled offensively in this series, but like Scott pointed out earlier, they had a long layoff as she does take off. Hyatt with a throw down and <laughs> right on the money. What a throw by JoJo Hyatt. You talk about picking up a situation. That right there is a huge momentum swing. Yeah, you take another look at it, and I think it's huge because you just talked about North Carolina, they want to establish and put some pressure on Clemson, but Hyatt answers right back, and like I said, you can't get a better throw than that. No, that was right spot on. So base is clear now with two gone. Now peel down, no call. Burkhart been swinging a very consistent bat. You see right here, she was able to hold off on it. Yeah, Burkhardt's got some power out of the 3 0 She's got the best batting average on the team. 365 coming into today. Yep. So North Carolina has the weapons, Scott. I think yep. it's just one of those things where it's just you got to get back into a rhythm. You had such a long layoff. 17-day layoff does not help. It doesn't help, too, that you're facing a team that's a fast riser and has, you know, a pitching staff that is quickly becoming one of the best in the conference, if not, you know, one of the more surprising staffs in the country. Well, I was just absolutely impressed with Millie Thompson yesterday. I mean, Cagle's going to get the publicity that she deserves and that she has earned. But, you know, if, uh, if Spencer and Thompson get going, the Tigers are going to be a handful. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough when your offense is scuffling and then you have to face this combination or this duo and the confidence, each outing, too. It's like they're competing against one another just for, you know, just almost for personal reasons. Just say, hey, who can pitch better? We talked about in the opening the consistency Clemson's had in the circle so far this series. Yep. This one's sent left side. And the Tigers get out of it. So some good defense from Clemson is able to get them out of the inning. We have the Back here in Clemson, South Carolina, as we get our first look at the starting lineup for the Tigers. And, Scott, this is a lineup that uh, I would say they're not scuffling. They're, they're, they're hitting the ball really well they're right now. They're doing very, very well. And it starts at the top one, Mackenzie Clark, the dynamic freshman out of Florida. You see Madam Moore comes behind her. And then here comes Kegel, Gumbarda, and Gilstrap, people who are, are uh, accustomed to driving in runs. In the circle, they'll be facing the right-hander, the senior from Gainesville, Florida, It'll be Katie Grace Olinger, who she's got a tough task in front of her today. Yes, she worked yesterday uh, and uh, had a little bit of a tough outing. She had to come in off the bench quickly when Pickett was injured. So, uh, you know, today she's getting her own start fresh. See what she can do. Well, she'll be facing one of my favorite players to watch in this conference, and Mackenzie Clark, who we've talked about it. She's only a freshman. By the time she's done here, if she continues on that upward trajectory, she's going to be one of the I mean, she's going to go down into Clemson Lloyd. Yep. And one of the things I already see with the uh, Carolina defense, they are playing deeper <laughs> today than they have earlier in the, in the series. And the Tigers were able to use the long ball in game two yesterday to their advantage. And I hope that the fans get a chance to see Clark run because she gets to she gets to wide open like in one step. And Clark has great speed. Not only out in center field as you take a look at the defensive alignment for North Carolina. They are playing a little bit deeper, respecting the bats of the Tigers. Yep. It's all got to start with throwing strikes on the mound. You know, if the pitcher throws strikes, not walk people, don't hit batter, and the infield or outfield doesn't make errors. It is very difficult to score one run before you get three outs. You just, it all starts with banging that strike zone. And against a good hitting team like this, we talked about how Clark can run. She leads the 
or conference in triples, tied for second division one. She's a, I would say, she just is the star. I mean, she's a spark plug for this team. Yeah. She can do a little bit of everything. She is a very dynamic freshman. She stays patient, able to work a leadoff walk, so we might see some of that speed. Now, you'll see what Mattimore, coming up here, we're going to show a clip of what Mattimore did yesterday in the first game. And there it is right there. A big fly, nice play made by the fan. And yesterday we saw something that has not happened all year. We saw the uh, the fine Tar Heel catcher, Taylor Green, throw out Mackenzie Clark in a, in a stolen base attempt. And that's the first time Clark has been thrown out all season. You think that brings any hesitation or in the back of her mind now that she knows that she's been gunned down once? Or is the, or is the confidence at Clark, for Clark an all-time high right no, now? No, she's going to go. She, she's going to go. <laughs> she's going to go. Everybody in the stadium knows that <laughs> she's, she's probably going to go. It's a matter of when. <laughs> Not a matter of if, but when for Mackenzie Clark. Yeah. So Clark reached on the walk. First base runner for the Tigers. You see right there, Green trying to look back. She, I think as a defense, especially when you were behind the backstop, I mean, you know every, with every single pitch, you've got to be alert and on your right. toes, knowing there's a threat out there on the base path. Well, the one thing that, that Green behind the plate has shown in the first three games, she is unafraid to throw the ball. And she's got a good arm. I've been very impressed with her presence behind the plate. I've been very impressed with the way she uh, is aggressive with base runners. She's done a fine job. There goes Clark, but it's fouled off. Goes. I don't know if that was hit and run or if that was just the uh, Straight steal, but she got a good jump. But Mattimore fouled it off. Yeah, and here's the jump you were talking about. I mean, such great quickness. And have you ever seen that out of a player this young? I mean, I think that's what really strikes me. She's still very young. Well, yeah, she's like I said, she's a rookie, but she is very, very <laughs> talented. Strike three called, so Mattimore goes down looking. Good bounce back there. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a change of speed pitch there. But that's a that's a big out. Yep, it bent, it bent a little bit and went back down, I guess, over the strike zone. So one on, one out. That'll bring up Valerie Cagle, one of the top two-way players in the ACC. And she is a very aggressive hitter. There goes Clark, throw down, and a beautiful throw. There's a great jump, but an even better throw from behind the plate. There's two gone. I, I told you about it. <laughs> Green's, got, Green, Green's got a nice arm, and she likes to use it. So Clark cut down. And I think that's going to be a battle to be watching throughout the season is now Clark being cut down two times from Green. So base is clear now with two gone. Roped right side. And Cagle with a two-out single. Yep. Cagle turned that ball around. So here's Marissa Gumbarda with two outs. Clemson's been good with two outs. And, and Gumbarda has been very quiet in this series. And if I was a, a Tar Heel, that would scare me to death because she is a big-time offensive weapon. You know, you're putting up the kind of offensive output the Tigers have this weekend. And arguably one of your biggest bats has been quiet. That's, that's a little bit scary for the opposing team. Yeah, and we saw Gumbarda come alive in the Sunday game last weekend against Duke after being relatively quiet at the first part of the series. Chance to do damage here with two outs. Kegel at first. Skyed will range out of the outfield grass. And Brooks hauls it in. So Clemson threatens a little bit. It's a cold Saturday here in April. Fans are bundled up as we're scoreless here between North Carolina and Clemson as we take a look at the head coach for the North Carolina Tar Heels. And, Scott, it's, it's a person – 
And Donna Papa, who's entering her 36th season, she is safe to say she's had some experience here in the ACC. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> she is a University of North Carolina icon in her 38th year of coaching, 36 of them right there at UNC. You see that over 1,300 wins, five times conference coach of the year, and it was a 2012 inductee to the National Fast Pitch Coaches Hall of Fame. So she knows what it takes to build a winner, especially 30 of her 35 seasons at North Carolina resulted in winning records. That's just consistency over a long period of time, which, I, I mean, yes. you know that, that, that'll pay well, too. It, it helps. <laughs> It keeps you employed. <laughs> so we get a look at Taylor Green, who had a fantastic arm behind the plate. We'll try to do it with the bat here. Yep. Drove in a big run for the Tar Heels on Thursday in what was a very, very close game for the first five or six innings. Uh, and we've already talked about what she does back there behind the plate. She's a big part of what North Carolina does. A lot of her attributes may not show up in a uh, on a scorecard, but she's a spark plug. She's a, just a uh, tremendously hard-working athlete. Trying to get North Carolina jump-started here in the second inning. Green batting in the cleanup. A nice on-base percentage, nice slugging percentage, but... North Carolina looking for offense somewhere. They'd like to find it from their catcher. Big swing and miss right there. That's what Cagle can do to you. She's one of those pitchers that can just throw it right by you. And you see right there, it was a good hard pitch down at the knees. And Green had no chance catching up on that. And even if she did, I don't know what she would have done much with it. That's, that's the tough part about that type of pitch. Right. So we get a look at Gabby Katz, who was stepping against Cagle. And this is a very rare start for her. She's only got two at-bats on the season, looking for her first hit of the year. The Texas native inserted in the lineup. And the Tar Heels trying to shake some things up. Just not the type of offensive output they've wanted so far, but that layoff has hurt them. Everybody watching today needs to know that the University of North Carolina has a very proud softball history. They are accustomed to playing late into the season and into the postseason, and uh, nobody's going to be satisfied until they get things cranked back up in that dugout. The two-week hiatus has definitely left the bats a little bit sluggish for the Tar Heels. Well, there's no substitute for live pitching game day. You can only stuff. do T work so many times. Right, and batting practice just becomes laborious and everything. You see there, we got a strikeout right there of Miss Katz. You take a look at it see once right again. Here. Just, I mean, what are you going to do? It's unhittable. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kegel, two quick strikeouts here in the second inning, two quick outs for the right hander. If Kago gets in a groove, it's going to be an uphill climb. Skyler Brooks, the shortstop for the Tar Heels, will take her cuts. She's had a nice defensive series. The entire infield for North Carolina has had a very nice defensive series. North Carolina sound fundamentally on the defensive side of things, trying to get those bats working. And like you said, it's going to be an uphill climb if you do allow Cagle to get in a rhythm. And North Carolina's a well-coached team. They just are a team that's got to get innings under their belt where they can get, get going again. The last game they played before the COVID shutdown was uh, they, they earned a victory against a nationally ranked Notre Dame team. So this team can compete with very, very good teams. That they, but you can't do it, you know, if you take 17 days in between games. <laughs> yeah, over two-week hiatus, and it's showing right now for North Carolina. You talk about it's a proud program. We talked about the tradition they have with the coaching staff. Without that 17-day layoff, this would, might have been a little more high-profile matchup. 
Yep. But Kegel making quick work. Not much yep. you can do there with Valerie Kegel dominating out of the circle as we head to the bottom. Back here, bottom of the second inning, scoreless between North Carolina and Clemson. You take a look at the head man for the Tigers, John Rittman and Scott. It's a, a man that you're familiar with, I think. I, you're, you're pretty good friends, but he's got quite the resume. Oh, yeah. If You know, if I was going to start a program, and my compliments to Mr. Radakovich, I would want to go out and find me someone like John Rittman to start my program. He's very experienced. He's a excellent teacher of the game, fine recruiter, and above all else, a great, great guy. And he's done a great job uploading softball here in Clemson. And the Gilstrap will be the first to face Olinger here in the bottom of the second. You talk about, I mean, this is an athletic program that's proud. And you just insert a softball team that obviously you can, you know, great crowd on hand. You had some great recruits come in, some great transfers. I mean, it's just already, we haven't even been a full season through Clemson softball. This one's roped left side foul. But they're already showing strides of being what could be one of a young, exciting program across the nation. Oh, yes, they are a young, exciting program. And they're, they're fun to watch. Uh, they're going to get better. They're going to have setbacks along the way, too. The competition is going to get better as the season and postseason involves. But they are uh, they're doing a great job uploading this program. See Gilstrap step in. She had a couple of nice hits yesterday in the winds. She's a transfer in here out of USC Upstate. She was an all-conference performer while, while at Upstate and when they were members of the Atlantic Sun Conference, now called the A-Sun. It's a beautiful pitch for strike three. Gilstrap goes down looking. So Olinger's had a couple good strikeouts, and she's using that off speed, it looks like. And I want to tell you something. Olinger had a very difficult day yesterday. And what she has shown bouncing back is outstanding. Now here comes one of yesterday's stars, Abby Stewart, as you see what she did. And there we go again. <laughs> yeah, Abby Stewart can change the game with one swing of the bat. And I mean, she twisted and turned on that ball. She hit out of the park. Just the sound of it. It sounded different. That's how you t you know yep. you know it's immediately a good one. As the oh, yeah. freshman from North Carolina, and, and even going back to how this roster is constructed, Scott. I mean, you have a freshman right here in Abby Stewart. The batter before is a transfer, so it's a good mix of veterans who have that experience that can help out these younger players. Again, compliments to the staff of how they went about building building the roster. Back to Gilstrap. She was one of those athletes who grew up here in South Carolina and wanted to play softball at Clemson since she was a little girl. The only problem was they didn't have a softball team. <laughs> but once they did, she found her way here, and I know that Rittman's glad she did. Stewart rips this one into left field. She continues with a hot bat, and there's a one-out single for the Tigers. Yep. Did a good job of driving that ball. And that's going to bring up Keller, who... Had a big game, too, yesterday. A couple of home runs. We took a look. We talked about that roster construction. You have a lot of freshmen, but when you talk about those transfers, and I think a common theme, except for the two from Troy and Army, they're all in-state, so they probably, you know, they're probably they familiar with this program, or I should say the athletic program when they got that team. Yeah, this is a uh, going to be a, a destination location for uh, people in the southeast. First pitch swinging. Sends this one to right field, no tag. Yep. It's a shame we only got one pitch with Keller because I was going to say, when you have someone with that kind of bat and that kind of pop at the seven hole, that just shows you how deep your lineup is. Well, she's, she's uh, actually was forced into duty because one of their regular starters, uh, Aaliyah Loa Lego, uh, is out with, an, with sickness. Non-COVID. And that just shows you how deep your team is when you can have someone come off the bench and provide immediate impact like that. So we take a look at Candy Pereira, another senior on this roster. He's played a, done a nice job playing second base for the for the Tigers. But she's got a good glove over there at second base and can provide a little bit of offense at the bottom part of the order. We talked about one through nine, how this lineup 
know, stands out. It's there's not. I would not say there's not a glaring weakness if you're an opposing pitcher. Right. It's uh, it's a team that that they're going to swing the bat, and they have the propensity of hitting it real hard when they do. <laughs> Just like that right there. Yeah. Like that. That. That nearly got Stewart. <laughs> there wasn't a lot she could do, but good job of hitting that time by Pereira. Yeah, just ropes this one in the right field. Yeah. And that's going to bring up the catcher, JoJo Hyatt, who made a fine throw back in the first inning to cool off a, a possible North Carolina uprising. Yeah, both catchers have shown off the arm here yeah. early on. Now, if you're Oliger, this is who you want to get because Clark's on deck, and you, you don't want Clark to hit with runners in scoring position. So if you're Olinger, you've got to go after her. And I know Olinger, you know, she's a senior, but this is part of the, like the maturation process of a pitcher. Yeah. Can you can you bounce back after giving out that two out single and right. get a desperate out that you need right here? Yep. Well, I'm sure throughout her career she's been in this position before. It's, it's now her job to navigate it. There's a nice job by Green throwing behind the runner at first base. Green is unafraid. As you watch this game today, you're gonna there's no circumstance where she's afraid to throw the ball. Yeah, as long as you're on target, that's not a bad idea. First and second hitter-friendly count to JoJo Hyatt. I think in a 3.33 Clint with two outs. Tigers could use a two-out hit, but right now you're in danger of walking. And they're hitting 3.33 in this series with runners in scoring position. So we got a runner out there at second base right now. Let's see what the Tigers do. Watching that one all the way in. Yep, she was taken all the way. Wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure she's live, but I wouldn't be surprised if she takes this pitch. I'm trying to get Clark to the plate. Yeah, Clark would be a dangerous hitter with the bases loaded. We've talked already about what she can do with the bat. Not a bad cut, but it's foul. Now with a full count, the bases, base runners will be moving. We've seen Olinger, she's, you know, her two strikeouts that she has, she's been using the off speed. Does she dare go to that here full count? Oh, I'd, if it's your out pitch, yes, sir. I'm a, I'd be unafraid to throw it. The worst pitch you could possibly throw in this situation is ball four. There you go. And if you're throwing the change up for strike, yeah, throw it. She goes with the off speed and paints the outside corner. So Olinger gets out of a jam. The Tigers were threatening. As we head to the top of the third inning, North Carolina works themselves in and out of a jam, scoreless. We take a look at how the Tar Heels have done offensively in this series. And Scott, I think the big thing that stands out is column number three, or row number three, strikeouts, 31 through the first three contests. Well, you can thank number 72 for a lot of that. Cagle had a big day on Thursday, striking out 13. She struck out eight yesterday. And then uh, Thompson, the left-hander for Clemson, she was in double digits yesterday in strikeouts. They've really had their way with this lineup of North Carolina's thus far. Uh, only four hits in the series for North Carolina. North Carolina does have one hit already today. That came to the top of the first, but Cagle with already three punch outs. Those Came back to back to back in the second inning. As we get our first look at Caleb Baptista. And the one trend that I've noticed over the year with Cagle is she does get better as the game goes on. That can be dangerous for a North Carolina offense that is maybe thinking sometimes we can just tire her out a little bit. Well, that's not the case with Cagle, like no. you said. Not in particular on a cool day. Pitchers love to throw on a cool day. And Cagle is very deliberate in what she does. Very rarely do you ever see any emotion out of her. She got a quick 0-2 count here. Three straight pitches, and just like clockwork, that's four straight punch outs yeah. for Cagle.
So we talked about the COVID pause that North Carolina had, and, and, and Scott, we've alluded to it so far. March 14th, they beat a, what is a very good Notre Dame squad, but Florida State, Georgia Tech, those two series, which could have been winnable potentially for Tar Heels, were canceled. Is this one single back up the middle? Uh, nice job of hitting right there by no, number number five, Campbell Hutchison. And the COVID, the COVID thing did take the Florida State series away from them, which would have been a very difficult series against the defending national champions. And but the Georgia Tech series would have been a very doable series for them, uh, in terms of getting work in, continuing to get better, and all that. And uh, you know, losing those eight games uh, from the schedule is just, just, just really, really been difficult for uh, North Carolina. We're talking to I me, mean, there may have been some things you could have taken positive out of that Florida State series. You talked about how good the Seminoles are, but yep. that Georgia Tech series would have been good for a lot of things. You get a lot of work in, and you build some confidence heading into this series. This series. Yeah. That's nothing dispersion against Georgia Tech. I'm just, just talking about matchups and competition. Good pitch there from Cagle. Yeah. Not afraid to go inside. No, she's not. Uh, Kegel will pitch anywhere, and Kegel will change speeds. She hasn't had to do it yet, but she will change speeds. You want to throw a lot of strikes here to the nine-hole hitter. Three straight, and we'll see Thompson head back to the bench. And that's that, and that's five strikeouts in the last six at-bats. Back to the top of the so I want you to look at these different these pitches right here. Here's the next last pitch. It was kind of up and in. This pitch right here, down and away. That's called hitting your spots. You can't draw it up any better. This one's fouled off. And the ability to have that command, I think, and, and work in and out and work up and down is we've seen the game change a lot over the past couple of years, what pitchers want to do. But you talked about she hasn't really had to use the off speed much, and that's got to feel good too when you know oh. that you're, you're when you know that your velocity you have or you have the velocity to really get it past almost everybody in the lineup and location too. She's hitting her spots pretty well right now. So Cagle with five punch outs already as this one's popped up. Yeah, if a ball comes in the press box, it is entirely up to you to make it's a play. Entirely up to me. Okay. Entirely because I am going the other way. <laughs> all right. Our very fine producer, Mr. Rick Bagby, has not supplied me with a glove. Therefore, okay. I am not going to try to catch a ball in here. That wasn't that wasn't in the con contractual agreement. I no. Think. Runner goes. Throw is a little bit late. I think the tag might have been late, but an even better job slide right there from Hutcherson. I think Hutcherson did a nice job sliding to the outside part of the base. And Gilstrap just missed the tag. I think that's a good call. I think Hutcherson snuck that right foot in. That and I want to beg Gilstrap's pardon. That was Pereira covering the bag. So North Carolina with a runner in scoring position and two gone. We got a 2-2 two -two count. Well, a base hit here would be huge for the for the Hills. I always allude to different sports too, Scott. It's almost like basketball. When you see one go through the net, you build some confidence. If they right. can see a run come across, that might be able to spark North Carolina's offense. Exactly. Well, little check swing floater. And there is the out. So Pereira hauls it in. North Carolina threatens. Back here on the campus of Clemson University as the Tar Heels and the Tigers battle it out in game four of this weekend series. First Saturday in April, and it's a, a, a tad bit chilly. We got the jackets on yep. up here in the press box. A little chilly, but beautiful. They got big doings on this campus. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, heard, Bryce, but they have a football team at Clemson. They do. I've yes, heard they're, they're, yeah. they, are they pretty good, too? They, they do very well, yes. And today's their spring game over at uh, the stadium there. As you see, a, a view into Memorial Stadium, Death Valley, as they call it. And... Uh, our good friend Don Munson will be working that game today, which is going to start around, I think, 1 one thirty. And I'm being told, even as we speak, Alabama and Clemson's women's soccer teams are squaring off. So they got a big day going on here. I think that's why they had to call you and I as reserves uh, up here. I, sir, am not a reserve. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mackenzie Clark strides up to the plate, second time through the order. And Scott, how do you fare here? You, you've seen now Olinger for the first time. What sort are of some adjustments you feel like this Clemson lineup can make? Well, they they're seeing she's got much better command than she did yesterday, and uh, so they're having to adjust their thinking a little bit. Uh, they were probably really big-eyed and eager when they saw who was going to pitch this game today, but this is a different type of pitcher than they saw yesterday. I've been very, very, very impressed with what Olinger's done. And she had the big bounce back in the second inning, that big strikeout with runners at first and second. Yes. Which you talk about maybe yesterday that was an opportunity where Clemson could have put up a couple runs and made a big well, inning out of it. They did that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And so this has been a very good outing so far, the first two innings for Olinger. And I know Coach Papa's happy about that. Once again, going back to that off speed, she's used it exclusively when she needs a strike. Yes, I, I mean, a, a changeup like any other pitch, if you have command of it, use it. That's a tough pitch to hit. Clark walked and then was cut down trying to steal the top of the first. And just rifles this one into the gap, but a nice running grab out there by Burkhart. Great jump by Burkhart. And a day ago, that would have been a triple. But the way they they were positioned today, Burkhart got a great got a great jump on this ball, and she was tracking it all the way. Watch this. That's a great jump. Yeah, great nice, first step. Nice play. Thursday or yesterday, that ball's a triple. Yeah, Clark will be standing at third, and Clemson would have a fantastic opportunity to drive it a run. Instead, it's nobody on and one gone here in the third. Once again, the Tigers have just not been able to pull the trigger on that changeup. No, well, that thing makes you weak at the knees. It's, that, that, if you've got command of that, you don't even have – your fastball does not have to be especially hard. It just – I mean, if you can change speeds. And locate. And locate. I mean, that's pitching. That's it in a <laughs> nutshell right there. You make a lot of money at the next level. You better believe you can. Matamore struck out looking in the first. She talked about how she had a, has already had a big series. And I think the thing right now, you, you may be playing into the back of the mind for the Tar Heels. You're doing good out defensively, but you know that this Clemson offense can probably only be held quiet for so long. Yeah, and, and what they do when they when they do wake up, they score runs in bunches. This was a hard hit grounder through the left side. Yeah. We've talked about Clemson's offense and what they can do. Here's a series summary. You talked about entering today. They're 12:36. You had the quick calculator over there. You had 3:33 average, but I think you look at what they've been able to do: scoring runs in bunches, and they just do it and they attack early and often. Well, you see right there, they've got they got 22 runs in the first three games, and when you're scoring over seven runs a game, you've got a great chance to win. <laughs> and uh, and they uh, they're a team that when they get hot, they they just they stay hot. And uh, I think right now we're going to see a pitch runner coming in for the. Uh, for the Tigers, uh, Carly Shannon's going to come in and run at first base. And uh, Matamore will return to the lineup, I'm quite certain. You get a little more speed out there. Yeah, and you got to put that, you got to put your base running glove on now these days. Now, when you were coaching, did they have those? The base no, running gloves? They barely had batting <laughs> gloves. So Shannon comes in to run at first for Clemson. See if the Tigers are aggressive. We've already seen the right arm of Green. I don't know that you'll see her run in this case. She, you very well may, but I don't think they'll want to take the bat out of the hands of Cagle. Well, you're one for one today, so. Yep. We'll and I, I think that you, what you're going to see is they want to see Steve go first to third. Trying to work low in the zone against yeah. Cagle. You have to be careful with Kegel because Kegel can drive the ball out of here in a hurry. Kegel's home runs are, are very line drivish a lot of times, and Matamore hits the the, the uh, big graceful ones out of here, and then Gombardas are just really graceful. Hot shot right side. They're going to go for two, but they'll get the force out at second. Yep. 
Hit the ball very, very sharply right at the second baseman. And you see that uh, she does a great job. Baptista feeding that ball over to the shortstop. And there was really not a lot anybody could do. So with two outs now, Kegel's out there at first base. Clemson's been able to get runners on. Just one for five, though, when they can get those runners on. Yep. It's Gambarda, who we talked about, hasn't made a ton of noise in this series, but could very well make her presence felt with one swing at the bat. Well, you see she's hitting 315 on the year with 25 RBI and seven home runs. She's talked about for a reason. Yes, one, she is. One of those in the lineup, and especially in a lineup like Clemson we've talked about, that you've got to circle where number 25 is. Yeah, well, the first two weeks of the season, she came out red hot. I mean, she was hitting everything. I mean, I don't know how they managed to do it, but you'd look in the box score and she'd go like five for four. I mean, I don't know how <laughs> you do that. Extra hit somewhere. Yeah, I mean, she just was hitting everything. And, uh, but she, uh, she certainly has the ability to change the scoreboard. Scott said she has seven home runs, five doubles to her credit. Struck out 13 times in 73 at-bats. Big part of the Clemson lineup. Pitch got away from her. But good job of Green bouncing around back there. Green's not very tall, but she is very, very active. 2-2 pitch coming to Gambarda. Golfed center field and deep. Ranging back, looking up and gone. So with one swing, she makes her presence felt. Well, she woke up, didn't there she? There she goes. <laughs> I'll tell you what's the truth. I, I, I said it in her first at bat. She's been quiet all weekend, and that would scare me to death. And just like that, it's 2 nothing Tigers. And that ball just kind of kept carrying. Yeah, it kept just, carrying. It did, and there's a little bit of wind blowing in. But like I said, she hits that high majestic home run, and she did. And that ball, you know, just got out over the 220 sign. Burkhart went as far as she could. And just like that, 2 nothing. So Gambarda brings the Tigers faithful to their feet. 2 to nothing, they lead it. And that's a dangerous thing. We talked about how Clemson can score runs in bunches, and that was all with two outs. Yes. And right now is a great time to find out about Katie Grace Olinger because right now she's got to hit the reset button right now. If she's going to keep the team in the game, she's got to hit the reset button right now. She has pitched much better than she did a day ago. And, uh, you know, there's been two singles, I mean, a single and a home run in this inning. Uh, she's got to forget about that and just go back to doing what she's been doing the entire game. That's what separates the good from the great right here. Being able to kind of have that bounce back mentality. You got to throw that one away. Nothing you can do about it right now. That's absolutely correct. Clear your mind, clear your soul. So Hensley Gilstrap, who struck out to lead off the second inning, will bat with two outs. Oh, there's that off-speed <laughs> pitch. I tell you what, that's an effective pitch when you can locate it. And she just made Gilstrap, who was a very good hitter, look weak in the knees. See what she goes with, 2-1. See there, you see the... The standings, North Carolina now below 500 at 10 and 11, but six and six still in the league. The league is still in front of them. And you see Clemson there, who's had no stoppages this year, uh, out there at 17 and four in the conference, right now sitting in second place. But leads the league in wins. But percentage points right now have them trailing Florida State, as you see that Gilstrap walks. And that's going to bring up Abby Stewart. And Bryce Stewart drove a ball out of this ballpark yesterday. Yeah, Stewart's got some pop in her bat. And this is where Clemson can – the, the snowball can, the effect can start right here. You get a walk. You had the home run. You get a walk. And now with a bat like Stewart, it can really get out of hand. 
And I think if you're North Carolina, you got to take some solace. It's it's you know two runs is not insurmountable. Now the way with Valerie Cagle's pitching, it could feel like that definitely. But you got to feel confident in your offense at some point and say we we can get two runs. At yeah, least. we can we can battle these people. But right now, what you got to do is get off the field. You got to get in the dugout. Matakaya Keller standing in the deck circle. Olinger doesn't want to get there and put runners in scoring position. No. Going back to it once again. Go back to the well. If it's not broke, then don't fix it. I mean, it just continues to work, but I'm telling you, you got to throw strikes. Yep. <laughs> Name of the game, <laughs> throw a strikes. Gill strap at first, one two count. That's a rocket. Left center field going from first to third as Gilstrap. It'll trickle all the way to the wall. Clemson's going to bring another run in. Maybe misplayed out there in left center field, and the Tigers add another. Well, the ball the ball was hit very, very sharply, but it got under the glove of the left fielder, Thompson, and rolled all the way to the wall. We'll have to see how that scored. You see, here comes Gilstrap. She... She thought she was going to be hanging out at third base, but when the ball got away, she, she was waved on in. I'd like to see another look at that play by, from the defensive end to see if that ball just beat her or did it get under her glove. And it might have been a case of Thompson trying to peek in and see where Gilstrap was on the base path. And this brings up Keller. I'll tell you one thing, this could be scary right here with Keller. As you take another here look at go, this right. One. Right here, we see the ball hit. Yeah, it got by her. That, that, should, that should probably go as a, uh, a single and an E7. This one's roped right center field, and the Tigers are just peppering the outfield right now. There's another run coming in to score. That brings Stewart around, and Keller continues her good work. And what you're seeing right now is exactly what didn't need to occur. And watch watch Keller swing right here. This ball was hit with authority. Bang. It don't look much better than that right there ever. And I'm impressed. Kept her weight back. Yes. You know, and drove that ball and drove, off. She field. drove through, yes. I mean, did lower a good half, job. great lower half right there. Uh, you know, we talked a couple of batters ago about how Olinger's job was to get them off the field but only two runs scored. We also talked about how this Clemson team can cloud up and rain on you and score in bunches. And uh, right now the advantage is to the offense. Yeah, it was going to be one or the other. Right now it's going the Tigers' way. Four to nothing. They've pushed across a crooked number here in the third. And it can keep going. One through yep. nine we talked about this lineup. There's not a batter that – I think North Carolina can look at it and say, okay, we feel confident. Not that you can't feel yep. confident, but right. we feel you know good about getting this out. Well, Pereira singled in her, her first at bat, I believe. That was a hard hit down the first base line. Right. Line drive, ranging back, had to go back out after coming in. That was almost dangerous. But the Tigers push across four here in the third. Marisa Gambarda with a little help from the yeah. wind. The Clemson faithful enjoying a day out of the ballpark. Four to nothing, the Tigers lead after pushing across those four runs in the third inning. They're enjoying the sunshine out there. Yeah. Enduring a little bit of a chilly breeze. I'll say on the field, Valerie Cagle goes back to work. And this is, to me, this is a big inning right here for North Carolina. If, can you have a response after the Tigers pushed across four in the bottom half of the inning? Absolutely. Uh, it, you, if you have any hopes, any hopes of getting back in this game, uh, it would be very, very imperative that you respond immediately because what you have out there right now is one of the best pitchers in the league with a four-run lead. And, you, all and, you've only got, and you've only got 12 <laughs> outs to try and tire. I mean, Destiny Middleton, the sophomore, two-hole hitter, will lead us off the third baseman. Try to get something going. She was or she was successful, had a single. Yep. And I'm very impressed with her third base. Mm -hmm. She does a great job on defense for the Tar Heels. 
and she smoked a line drive into left field at the top of the first inning. And you can hear the pop of the mitt, the velocity. I mean, if you get if you get the bat on the ball, it's not going to take much to send it somewhere. No, she runs it up there at 70 miles an hour. She sometimes will be just above it, just below it. That is quick in this sport. Sends it left side, but a nice play over there. And it's Bigham. Now, that's a big-time play right there by your third baseman. Thompson hit that ball right on the button. But Casey Bigham extends, knocks it down, has the presence of mind to get up and make the good throw over to Keller. That's a big out. Bigham, one of the transfers. She actually played second base at Furman, so has made the transfer over to the hot corner here for the Tigers. She's been such a pleasant find for the Tigers. She's John Rittman's infield Swiss Army knife. She does a little bit of everything. And, and that's got to – I mean, we talk about what Clemson has, we'll say, in their in their toolbox, and she's she's one of those. I mean, you can plug and play her almost anywhere. All right. Exactly right. So here's Christina Burkhart, who had a nice running grab. Yeah, made a fine play in the outfield. She did run out of real estate on a home run from Gambarda. But North Carolina looking for some offense. They need – at least one to be pushed across, get some confidence going. And I would even say this too, Scott, the way the momentum shifted, the top of the third inning, North Carolina had a rally going. They right. had some threatening. Clemson's able to get out of that and then come in the bottom half and push across four. Exactly, and that's what, that's what I meant about a pitcher getting their, her team off the mound, off the field, I mean. And there's a walk, and that's news <laughs> because – Valerie Cagle does not walk many people. On the season, she's got 122 strikeouts coming into the game and only walking 24. That'll put a base runner on for North Carolina. The Tar Heels will take them any way they can get them right now against the right-hander. You better believe, and this brings up Green, the four-hole hitter. Sit back up the middle. They're going to go for two. It was bobbled. The out is going to be at second base. A good job from Gilstrap to stay with that. It was. And you're going to see Coach Donna Papa come out and want to know, did Gilstrap regain control of that ball? Because she did not have it. Yeah, they're going to have a conversation about that one. It, this will be interesting to look at right here. Does she regain control of the ball to get the force out? She's there, knocks it down. She's thinking about double play. Yeah, I think she may have had it. I think she may have had that. And I'm not sure with her playing in front of the bag if the base well, runner who was Burkhardt ever got to the second base bag until yeah. it was too late. And what happened right there, it, it was clear as day. It, Gilstrap was thinking double play, but you, and, but the trick to getting a double play is getting out one. <laughs> you got to get the first. You got to get the first one before you can get the second one. So she got ahead of herself right there. Those are the little things that Clemson's got to clean up uh, if they're going to play late into the postseason. Well, and two, we know, we've talked about North Carolina struggled. You may get, be able to get out as you take another look Let's at this. We one get one another more time. look here. Yep. See, I don't think she ever even got to the bag. It looked like. Yeah. But you talked about cleaning those things up defensively, Scott, and that's something against a team like North Carolina who's scuffling offensively, you may be able to get away. But when you play a team like Florida State, right. you know, and when come tournament time, that's going to be when yeah. rubber meets the road. Yep, they're going to make you bleed. What We're a play by leather. Pereira. <laughs> Clemson flashing the leather out here. Four to nothing. The Tigers lead. Back here in Clemson, South Carolina, Scott, where the bats woke up. Yep. You see the, 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 all, the long home run by Gambarda. You see a sharply hit ball to the outfield by Stewart that scores a run. And then you're going to see Keller drive the ball to right center field. Yeah, this Clemson offense woke up. And you take a look, 20-0 and 0 when they hit a home run. Well, they got the home run. Can they extend that undefeated winning streak? Yep. They've got a couple of little things like that, the 20 – the, the 20 and 0 when you hit a home run. They got another nice little nugget out there that uh, I'm sure that the production people are going to want to talk about here a little later. <laughs> so we get a look at JoJo Hyatt who will lead it off here. 
she wants to get in on the action. She struck out swinging, and I think when you got a, a ball club that is swings the bat as well, when you're not one of those involved, you feel a little bit left out. Yep, but I'm going to tell you something about JoJo Hyatt. She is one of the most underrated players on this team because of the fantastic job she does behind the plate with this pitching staff. It, it, JoJo Hyatt has had a very, very good year. Your pitchers cannot have a good year if your catcher's not having a good year. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, we've given a lot of credit so far to the work of this pitching staff, but it all starts with being able to call a good game and be active behind the plate. Tyatt so will look to get the bat started once again. And the one thing that a catcher is for a pitcher is, is just a, a human security blanket. Mm -hmm. And Hyatt does a great job of, of managing her pitchers by not letting them get upset, by going out and having a quick talk. Shows great leadership. We talked about Green on the other side for the Tar Heels. But both of them, I feel like they provide a calming presence. You come out the mound right. after a couple bad pitches, can provide some of that, uh, that, that calming presence that a pitcher may need. Yep. Green is in her junior year, and Hyatt is a rookie but they both show great presence out on the field. Hit her friendly count. That was a strike right through there. North Carolina needs a bounce back inning right here for Olinger. It'd be, it, it would do well for the Tar Heels and for Olinger to get a 1-2-3 in it. Easier said than done, oh, yeah. obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> this one's sitting right side. Yep. Got the uniform a little bit dirty. Yeah, foul ball tethered away, and the right fielder made a grand effort at it. And see Stubbs over there. Going to have to do a little laundry tonight. A little grass stain and whatnot. That's synthetic turf down the line there, so we didn't get a lot of clay on the uniform. That's a good thing. <laughs> this one's roped. Clemson's peppering the left side of the field right now. Another line drive with two strikes. It's looking like a beach ball to them right now coming up there. They uh, are really taking big swings. I think you're going to see John Rippman go to a pitch runner for, his, for a catcher. You see right there, JoJo Hyatt just drives that ball directly at the left fielder. Thompson does a good job of keeping that one in front of her. You can look at the pitch runner, Sarah Howell. Yep. He'll come on and run. A lot of option on this bench. We've talked about one through nine, but there's a lot of young options that can come in and play a big role in the pinch running game. Yep, and this concerns me, though, because she doesn't have a base running glove, and I don't understand <laughs> that. I mean, if, how can I be a pinch runner if I don't have a base running glove? She's got, she's got, she's got I mean, no gloves whatsoever. She's no, going old school. Old school. Top of the lineup, you flip your lineup card over as Mackenzie Clark, who has walked and flied out to center. She, I wouldn't be a surprised if she drops a bunt down and runs. Or she, uh, of course, she can also drive the ball right out of the ballpark. <laughs> That's the problem you have with her. You have a conversation. And I had her earlier in the year down in Atlanta against Georgia Tech, and we were talking about on the broadcast how you see some players that are just a little bit different. Oh, Clark yeah. has a lot of those tendencies, even as a younger yeah. player. And you see it. I mean, I, oh wow! Well, you see right there. Crushed. She can drive it out of the ballpark. I think somebody said that. <laughs> Set her up beautifully. Clark drives a no-doubt shot into left field, and Clemson adds another. Yeah, and I think she's pleased. Very excited. That is a dynamic young player right there. And that ball was hit hard. This was one of those right here, and you watched the weight transfer right oh. there. And she knew it when she hit it. <laughs> That's just one of those you know it when you hit it. It sounds different. It looks different. Yeah. And Mackenzie Clark is going to be a player that is probably going to be different. Her fourth home run of the campaign so far. She is extremely different. And I'll, I'll tell you something else about her. When you just watch her go about playing the game, you know, you were talking about what the it fact, the it factor, what it is, you know. And, and I've never been able to really properly describe it, but I know it when I see it. You and, saw it right there. And she has it. Yeah. And, and that's an example of it right there. She can beat you with the glove, the bat, the legs, the arm. 
I mean, she's just a dynamic player. Well, it's one of those they refer to in both the baseball and softball being a five-tool player. She's got yes. all the aspects of what makes a great player, and she's yeah. showing that at a young age. And uh, and we're seeing now that we're into the third time through the batting order. Uh, You're feeling a little more comfortable. Uh, Clemson is settling in, and they've done a pretty good job of getting Miss Olinger sized up. Yeah, through the first two innings, Olinger was fooling a lot of the Clemson hitters. Well, I do want to say this. She had, she came out here and pitched very, very well early in this game after a very tough day yesterday. So I hope that she'll take that with her, that, that she was able to bounce back. But this is a hard team to hold down right here, the Clemson Tigers. We talked about that. How long would it be until the bats woke up? And I think Gambarda answered that call right after we yeah, said that. And I mean, and, it, it, and it's, it's amazing is how contagious hitting can be. First person gets the big knock, and now everybody saying, give me a bat, give me a bat, give me a bat. And that's got to be fun, too, as an offense, because you want to hit. When, you're, when your lineup is excited about coming to play, you see the success, it's an infectious attitude. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tigers have pushed across four in the third, two so far, still nobody out. But a good bounce back yep. there from Olinger. She let the hitter that time help her get herself out by being very aggressive and chasing pitches out of the zone. See, that ball is four or five inches off the plate, and Mattimore chased it. So to bring up Cagle, who scored on Gambarda's home run. Last inning. Oh. Never like getting – I know pitchers love to work inside. That's when it gets a little scary. Yeah. and that, <laughs> Pitchers don't like it when other pitchers work inside, though. <laughs> We've seen Cagle do it in the circle. Has established the inner half. This one's grounded right side. A little trouble. Yep. But they'll record the out. Good job that time by the first baseman, Hutcherson. Hutcherson played first base. On Thursday, yesterday, she played second base. Versatility. So she's showing some versatility. And, I, you know, going back to, obviously, you know, COVID protocols and everything like that, that's important when you have players that can play a lot of different positions. We talk about Bigham on the side for Clemson, and now you see Hutcherson there at first base for North Carolina. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's Gambarda who – I'll go ahead and say it. I mean, her shot to center field was better than my golf swing. Oh, she well, golfed it out of there. And I don't I've have never, a good golf swing. I've never seen you play golf, but I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. Just kept carrying and carrying out to center field. And usually when she gets hot, she gets hot. Now, we saw this last weekend. Very quiet first three games. Came out on Sunday and just drove the ball all over the place. Just gets underneath this one. It'll stay on the infield. So after the home run, the Tar Heels are able to get three consecutive outs. Nice bounce back effort. But Mackenzie Clark with a no down. Beautiful weather here in Clemson, South Carolina, where the Tigers are enjoying a six to nothing lead. Scott, I think it's safe to say that we even with the wind blowing in, Clemson's hit the ball very hard. I think that even proves how hard they're hitting it they're right now. They're starting to see it, and they're, they're doing a very good job of uh, hitting mistakes. And uh, they have broken this game open now. If you're if you're North Carolina, you got to find something uh, to build upon now in these final three innings, if it indeed goes that long. Yeah, Skyler Brooks at the plate, who struck out part of the striking out the side inning that Cagle put together in the second. Nice firm pitch through there to get ahead. Even with, and too, you know, sometimes coaches will worry about the layoff in between innings when your offense does have a big inning. Mm -hmm. Cagle hasn't shown any of that. I mean, she comes right back and just looks as sharp like she just pitched. She's another one of those that you know it when you see it. Oh, yeah. Two-way player in, in as yeah. well. But she's doing it with the bat and in the circle. Yeah. And uh, I really love how stoic she is out there on the mound. There's strike three. 
And uh, I did see a little emotion out of Kegel yesterday when she gave up a run late in, in her in her uh, her work yesterday, and it really uh, really made her mad. You see right there, that hit her ad had absolutely no chance. That brings up Baptista. Yeah, Baptista was a strikeout victim looking last time. Just one walk so far, and you talk it's a rarity. Yeah, she angles very good with her control. And has been getting better with it, too. I mean, as the years unfolded. So. And I ask on the flip side, we talked a lot about Clemson and their mindset, but what's the mindset right here for North Carolina? You know what you have in front of you. You're trailing by six with yeah. a limited amount of time. But, I mean, against a pitcher like this, I mean, you, you don't have time to pick out a spot because you're down 0-2 very quickly. No, and you and you just got to take care of yourself right now if you're North Carolina. You, you got you to gotta realize what you're playing, who you're playing, and, and, and just find some positives to build on. Go home, say, hey, look, all right. We, we got X amount of innings to work in this weekend. We're going to shake it off. We're going to start fresh. As you see right here, Bigham does a great job. Gets a runner out that runs well down the line. And now you got the first baseman stepping in. Yeah, Hutcherson, who oh, that slaps got, one. That got in the dugout. Let's see if everybody's all right. Looked like Destiny Middleton might have got hit with that. That'll wake them up if they weren't we'll already that, awake that in the dugout. That got in there in a hurry, too. Yep. I think it got Middleton. I'm not sure. Well, Hutcherson will be paying for somebody's lunch. That's for sure. Yep. Just shows you the velocity that Cagle has. The one the great thing about the sport of college softball is a lot of camaraderie on the teams. Uh, these athletes spend so much time together, they become like a family. And, uh, and they, and they uh, just support each other so well. Strike three called. Valerie Cagle is just answering the bell every time her teammates call upon her as Clemson is... Back here in Clemson, South Carolina, where, Scott, this story has been much as it has been the whole series. Efficiency yeah. at the plate, efficiency in the circle. Absolutely. When you get good pitching and you back it up with some runs, you're going to have a good day most times. And today has been a case of that. I mean, Cagle is doing what Cagle does, going out there giving your team a great effort. And then the Clemson offense has done what it's done all year long, and that's they – you know, show the tendency of scoring run in bunches, runs in bunches. Sam's a Gilstrap steps in. I was just reminded, and I think it's a very, 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 very good point to make as you see the check swing here. Uh, Gilstrap. Clemson has played much better defensively today than they have shown in the first three games of this series. Been a lot cleaner. This one sky to the infield to be playable. Just into foul territory, one gone. Yeah. yeah. When you can put together, you talk about a great performance in the circle, I think that helps you defensively because your defense is more attentive. I mean, Cagle has seven strikeouts, but the defense has been involved and they've done a great job. We've seen Absolutely. a couple of plays where they've stuck with it in a tough situation. So we've seen a great play by Bigham in the infield. We've seen Prayer do a great job of smothering one. Uh, and They've been very clean. Abby Stewart steps in, who doubled and scored in the third inning, part of that four-run third. Yep, she has been hot. We talked about it in the open. Clemson was starting to feel it again after that 17-game win streak was snapped last week. I think it's so important, too, for this series. We talked about what North Carolina wanted to gain and what they could take coming out. But for Clemson, you're going to take a lot of confidence because you're feeling like yourself again. Well, and also they're getting contributions from up and down the order. Uh, early in the year, uh, 
they uh, they had to really rely on the middle of the batting order, but now they're getting it up and down as you see Stewart fly out to Burkhart in center field. And that's gonna bring up Keller and Keller has had a great series. Did not appear did not appear in the game uh, on Thursday. Well, yes, she, I think she got a pitch hit for appearance Thursday, but yesterday when she was called into action, when Logo Leo went down with illness, and she has had a great series. And I was really impressed with her double the opposite or the single the opposite field. It probably could have been a double. It was just hit way too hard. But just honestly, it was keeping the weight back and yes. just staying through the ball, which, you know, a lot of players can get pull happy or something like that. But, I mean, she can hit with power to all parts of the field. And she she hit a ball very hard out of the ballpark yesterday. Had her first two home runs of her career yesterday, and that's got to be a thrill. And, and you're right. Her swing is put together very, very well. She uh, does a great job with her lower half, and uh, she does drive through it. As Green goes and talks to Olinger. You got to be careful. You don't want to make a mistake, especially up in the zone. We've seen Olinger want to use the golf speed, but if you hang one, I think it's safe to say Keller can make you pay. Oh. In a big way. Oh, yes. Two and zero. You better be careful with her here. <laughs> you better be careful here because she now has an opportunity to pick a spot, and if it's in the neighborhood, jump all over it. It's a good eye there for the redshirt freshman. Ordinarily, with a six-run lead, you three zero, you may be tempted to turn Keller loose right here. See how much stress they have in her. She's performed well at the plate through this last couple days. She didn't miss this one. I don't, I don't know. Warning track. Wynn might have knocked that one down a little bit. Got it off the end of the bat. <laughs> Just missed. Before today's game, the senior, M.K. Bonamy, who elected not to play this season, but, Scott, it's the first-ever senior that has been awarded in the Clemson softball athletic program. She's a big part of this program. She had a great year back in 2020 going when COVID struck. She was a big part, first baseman for the Tigers a year ago. Has got her degrees, and she wanted to get on with her life, which is more than understandable. And it was great to see her back here at the ballpark, and I know she was excited to be honored by the – by the program here at Clemson and by the fans. Yeah, good crowd on hand. And, and, you know, Bonamy was one of those players who had already spent five seasons. And we have a pinch hitter for North Carolina. But, you know, she, yeah. she had gone through the four years and she had gotten her master's degree. So good little presentation pregame. As we get a look at the pinch hitter is going to be Dominique Montian. And she's hitting, coming into the weekend, she's hitting two – she was hitting 333 coming in and only three at bats, but now she has a fourth, so she's down to 250. She's got an RBI yep. to her credit. And she's hitting for Shayla Thompson. Clemson running out of time, just six outs to play with, trailing by six. Yeah. Tough spot to be in. We just we keep talking about it. What Cagle does out in the circle, I mean, it's just you don't feel like you can knock her out of the ball game either. Slow chopper. Nice play by Bigham out number one. Nice job. Remember, we talked about it very early in this game. Ground balls are a wonderful thing. And uh, Cagle has thrown a lot of pitches this weekend, and if you can get a one pitch or a two pitch out, you'll take it every day. You talk about she's done a lot of pitches too. You get some low stress outings. I mean, those are huge for the confidence oh, and for yeah. the psyche of a pitcher. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget the, the Dukes, I mean, excuse me, the Louisville game on the road where she threw over 170 pitches in one game. A hundred and over 170. <laughs> As they say in Boston, Georgia, that's a bunch. <laughs> it's a lot of pitches for Cagle. 
but she has been dazzling so far today. Seven punch outs, just one free pass, two hits given up. 18 batters face with an opportunity for another strikeout here, but it's fouled away. Yeah. I don't have anything on, in my notes. I do not think she's drove the bus yet for this team. So that's the only thing she has. I, I, I think that's the only thing that she's missed. Well, you get that license, they might let her. Yeah. She does everything else for the squad. Yeah. You talked about getting a lot of ground balls, too. That really keeps this defense engaged, which we talked about. They've maybe taken it personally to play a better brand of defense. There's strikeout number eight. And you'll see this is, again, as I've said before, this is Kegel doing what Kegel does, is making the ball bend, throwing it with authority, throwing it with confidence now. When you have Kegel in the circle and she's got confidence and you add in her velocity, her ability to mix speeds and ability to locate, I mean, I don't know, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if there's a, a harder pitcher to face when you kind of, that, that pitcher has that mentality. Well, this, this league has some great pitching in it. Uh, Florida State's got great pitching. Duke may have the best pitching staff in the, in the league, and uh, the top part of Virginia Tech's pitching is outstanding. Uh, as this season winds down and we start looking toward postseason play, there are going to be some great pitching matchups to watch and enjoy uh, late in the year. And I, and I want to just remind people, unfortunately she's injured and not playing uh, today, but Pickett, Brittany Pickett of North Carolina, a left-hander, is as talented as any pitcher in this league. And I'm not joking about that. She is that good. Yeah, pitching from top to bottom in the ACC has been impressive here in 2021. We take a look right at here. They're going to give us a shot, I believe. See Walters right there from Duke with an 053 ERA. Richard 087. And then here's Kegel at 1.04 coming in. This line left side. That'll be extra bases for the Tar Heels. As a big turnaround second, but a double for Destiny Middleton. And that ball was hit sharply. Great job of hitting. She did that earlier in the game. She does a really good job of hitting the ball opposite field. You watch her here. She stands, she stands in there and just drives it where it's pitched. Bigham had no chance. Matamor did a good job running that down. And that's going to bring up Burkhart. With a chance to drive in a run. Yeah, Middleton has speed out there. Burkhart walked. And it was cut down on a four fielder's choice in the fourth. Even if North Carolina doesn't come back to win this ball game, to, for me right here, this is a big confidence. Your three-hole hitter, Burkhart, who has seen her average drop this weekend. This be big for her and for the squad to at least, you know, see something other than a zero on the scoreboard. Absolutely. Chopped right side foul. See Keller pounce on that. She's a good defender in her own right at first base. Plays a really nice job, has some good awareness. She does, and, and I am told that in the dugout she is great. She's somebody to always keep the people laughing, keep the people loose. Uh, and every, every team needs somebody like that. And it goes back, you talked about Keller, what she can provide in that clubhouse and that dugout. Redshirt freshman. I mean, uh -huh. it just tells you how exciting this team, after they have two or three years in the belt, how dangerous. Because you, we talked about it early in the broadcast. You know, this is a team, They the only thing they may be lacking is the experience of playing in some high-intensity high situations. Yeah, and that's, that's going to come, mm -hmm. and that is going to be a test. But uh, the one thing they're going to have to deal with, too, is, Bryce, is expectations. People's expectations. Everybody needs to remember, this is an expansion team. <laughs> they are now playing their first full season of competition. And uh, and so people need to understand just how special what they're doing is. As you see, Burkhart drive it right up the middle, and here comes the throw. It's going to be cut off by Keller. They've got 
I thought they had Burkhart hung up, but they didn't. And just like that, the Tar Heels are on the board. Yeah, big confidence there for North Carolina. Burkhart doesn't try to do too much. Sends it back, back right, right where it came from. Hits it right back up the middle. Base runner easily scored from second base. Milton runs very well. And I'm going to brag on Mackenzie Clark one more time. You know, maybe we might get another comment in, but she has got a cannon out in the outfield yeah. as well. That was a great throw. Yeah. So North Carolina pushes across a run with one or with two outs. Taylor Green steps in, the junior from Milton, Georgia. Just outside the Atlanta perimeter. Yeah, uh, I described it yesterday, Bryce, as it is a suburb of Alpharetta, which is a suburb of Roswell, <laughs> which is a suburb of Atlanta. If anyone tells you they live in Atlanta, they're lying. Yeah. No one, I don't know if anyone actually lives in, Atlanta. in, in downtown Atlanta. Well, I'm sure there's people that do, but <laughs> it's just so easy for those of us who've been down that way for so many years. Where you live, Atlanta? <laughs> Hitter friendly 3 0 count. So Cagle kind of experiencing her first adversity here. A little bit of lapse in concentration, it looks like. She's probably a little bit upset with herself giving up the, the double and the single. That's part of the process, though. She's got to learn just to shed that. The four pitch walks in North yeah. Carolina threatening here. The old two out rally. Tell you one thing, walks will come back to haunt you, especially with two outs. Those usually don't bode well. We're going to see a pinch runner for Green at first base. I'm very confident in that. Let's see who's coming out. Looks like it's number 23, Jordan. Anisha Jordan. It'll be the freshman from North Carolina, Rocky Point, North Carolina, Anisha Jordan, as the Tar Heels. You don't want to get too ahead of yourself right here, but I think if you're the coaching staff, you're thinking if we could get a base hit in a gap somewhere, this could be a manageable deficit. Absolutely. Now I just saw Hyatt trot out to the mound. Probably, probably told her pitcher to knock this off and let's go. <laughs> let's get back to the dugout. Right. So it'll be Gabby Katz with two runners on and two gone, one run already in for North Carolina. That one had some giddy up on it. <laughs> that was a little bit of frustration yeah, behind that I one. I think that one had some emotion attached to it. And now she's way ahead, 0 and 2. You know, until this inning, Scott, I felt like every single time you see a Tar Heel step in the batter's box, you might as well just go ahead and put 0-2. Yep. It's just it's it's that quick that Cagle's able to get in front of hitters. Yep. Cagle's worked at a good pace, and she has worked ahead most of the day. It's a good recipe for success, and she's had that as she looks to get out of the sixth inning. Check the swing. One-two count now. So I'll see if I can set you up again. She worked outside with this one. Do you think they try to go inside? Oh, I think she's going to throw inside here. And hard. Very hard. It may go down, but it's going to be hard. It did go down. <laughs> Skips up to the plate on that one. I was, I was guessing drop ball there. So a 2-2 count. And the pivotal situation for the Tar Heels is Katz, who's 0 for 2, looking for a big base hit. I look for her right now to pick out a chunky part of the plate right here and try to throw it right by her. I know she's got the confidence. This is head left side. The trusty play of Bigham at third. You can always rely on that at the hot corner. Back here in Clemson, South Carolina, where the Tigers are looking for the sweep, and they're getting closer. Six to one, they lead it. And Scott, we're going to look at a pinch hitter here as it's going to be Jaden Cheek, the freshman from Carnesville, Georgia. Out of Franklin County High School. Yeah. Good opportunity right now for some young players to get some experience. Absolutely it is. And uh, 
Cheek is hitting 143 in limited action and play. This one's roped. And she has hit that one very hard, but into the teeth of the wind. But oh. the ball was dropped. So Cheek's going to be standing at second. She drove that one as far as the ballpark would hold it. Yep, and the left fielder and the wall and everybody got together at the same time. It was like <laughs> Shayla Thompson. You see, that was a good swing by Cheek. And right here, you see the ball, the wall, and everything. And she never did control it. She never had that ball. And you see, I'm not quite sure what that means, but it must mean something happy as she's out there with the leadoff double. I want to tell you one thing. That's when you know the ball is bouncing your way. When you're having a day at the plate like that, yep. and you're coming in fresh off the bench, cold off the bench, mm -hmm. and you just drive one. I mean, th that was as far as the ballpark could hold it. Yes, when it was hit hard, and it was in to a win. The wind is not blowing out right now. It is blowing in. So Cheek at second base. You got, jo the plate. You got JoJo Hyatt up there. Hyatt joined the party with a hit parade in the fourth inning. Yep. She's got a home run on the year. Eight RBI. Right back up the middle, seeing eye single. That might bring a run home. They're going to slam on the brakes. That was a good throw in from Burkhart. Very nice job of getting the ball in by Burkhart. And there's an old adage in uh, never make the first out at home plate. Uh, Clemson had, yeah. Cle Clemson's watched, done a good job. She's thinking score. She's doing the right thing. And then you see Johnny Ballgame down there throw up the stop sign. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They don't want to take the bat out of the hands of Mackenzie Clark, who with one swing right here, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, we've, we're, we're beating a dead horse with, when we were talking about this, but Mackenzie Clark, I mean, she's the kind of player, even at this age, is already starting to strike fear and make you, you know, calls for concern if you're in the posing dugout. Oh, yeah. She hit the ball way out of here, her last at bat. And right now the winning run is at the plate. Still nobody out. Runners at the corners. She thought about pulling the trigger. We take a look she at did. that home run from Clark. Look at this last at bat. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> That's your basic two iron. <laughs> Clark has been phenomenal. Right there, Miss Lowe. And I want to tell you one thing, the confidence that just, I mean, you saw her celebration in the home run. She right. knows. It's its really dangerous, I think, when the player knows how good they are. And, and, and even talking to the coach, stuff, I don't think that she even knows how good she can be. Well, she's not an arrogant player, but she does know she possesses skill. She's a, And uh, she also knows she's got a lot to still learn in this game. But she, she has all of the elements, all of the things you need to be a standout player. You see, we got an on deck shot right there of uh, Johnson. Looks like she's going to come in and hit for Matamore. The freshman Morgan Johnson, backup outfielder. Out of the Augusta, Georgia area. Right. That's just hit very hard. <laughs> hit the ball very, very hard. They've got a special player up here in Clemson, South Carolina with, with Mackenzie Clark. We talk about this roster and what they can do, but another run comes in to score for the Tigers. Watch this. Bam. That jammed her a little bit, and she still was able to turn on that thing and hit it hard through the 5-6 hole. When you get jammed, you can still put something behind a ball. I mean, that's when you know that you've yeah. got some bat speed. Well, just watch how quick her bat – yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look how quick her bat gets through the zone. Here's Morgan Johnson, runners first and second. You mentioned it earlier. I, you have to give credit to the people here at McCorder Stadium, which is a beautiful venue, mind you. But they have a great PA playlist. Oh. 
It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh. I mean, the people, the crowd, the, the crowd gets involved. The players love it. Oh. It makes. I, I'll tell you this. When whenever we do get back to full capacity, this is going to be a, one of the big venues. Oh. That is going to be, I think, a, a must come to if you're an ACC softball. Player. I had the I had the luck of uh, being here in the abbreviated season a year ago, the night that Georgia came up here to play, and Clemson was able to 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 earn a victory. And this place was packed, and this place was jumping. Great place to watch a ball game. Richard freshman Morgan Johnson. Johnson had a great fall of 2019, was poised to really uh, have, a, have a strong freshman year, and she tore up her knee. And so she, uh, her, she had her season kind of abbreviated. See right there. But uh, she has great power and uh, does a really good job of hitting the ball. But uh, like I said, she's still recovering from a, a – a torn up ACL that, that uh, you know, abbreviated her her year. She got hurt in the very first game of the season a year ago. Saw Taylor Green got hit on the backswing yeah. from Johnson. Right there, he evens up the count at two and two. And I think Olinger, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think she's just trying not to make a mistake. Yep. And, 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 and you, can, you don't really want to pitch like that. No, you don't. You don't want to start trying to guide the ball and aim the ball. And This is golf left side. This is going to bring in at least one. Clark showing off the speed. She'll go first to third. And everyone come off the bench and get a hit. Yeah. The Tigers are swinging the bats. And that was a big-time double right there. The young freshman just turned on it. And lickety split before you know it now. You'll see this swing. Watch this. Bang. Good extension, good follow through. Going to bring Kegel to the plate with a chance to end this thing. I mean, wouldn't that be a nice bookend performance for the two way player? The, the go home run is at third. And nobody out. Yeah, she was thinking about it on that swing as they yeah. tied her up inside. You know, long fly ball ends it. I mean, uh, now's the time if you're the the outfield for North Carolina, you want to shorten it up. Play at little league depth because a, a deep fly ball ends the game. The infield's got to be in. Quick stat to throw out there. This is why the Clemson's had the success. They're batting at just a cool 800, four yeah. or five with runners in scoring position. Yeah. That'll bode well for you. A nice day. And everything was so quiet until the bottom of the third. This one's stroke right field. It'll bang off the wall, and Clark will come in to score, and that's the ball game. Clemson in dominating fashion, and what a better story. Valerie Cagle, she does it in the circle, and then she just ends it right there. Yep. She drove that ball. That's going to go as a game-winning single, but that right there was that, that had double written all over it. She just drove that ball out to the right field wall to end this thing. And I'll tell you this, I can't be more impressed. You talked about it. You said it right before that was hit. It, it looked like it might be a pitcher's duel there early on, but the bats of Clemson, they just can't be quieted that long. No, they can't, and, and, and I it's contagious with this team. They score in bunches. They score in bunches, and I think it's safe to say the Tigers are back to their winning ways. As we take a look at what just happened, Valerie Cagle did a fantastic job. She did it in the circle, and she did it right here. Great extension to oh, end the ball game. Yeah, she just drove that ball. Look at that. That's a long single right there. And Clark, I don't think it would have mattered if they'd have caught it anyways. Clark, no. with her speed, would have came in to score well, with yeah, she'd have ease. She either tried it in. You're exactly right. So Clemson does it all. Great defense, great base running, and great offense and pitching as well. The full shebang here for the Tigers as they put the book in on a fantastic series. And you, we talked about in the open, they did what they needed to do to gain some momentum heading into, we'll say, the latter half of the season. This was definitely a weekend that saw mission accomplished. They, uh, they came in here, they came in here, win four ball games, 
And now they've got to go on the road next weekend up and have a tough challenge at South Bend, Indiana. Well, it's been a fun time. We appreciate you watching as well from home. For my my, for my partner, Scott Whitaker, Scott Whitlock and Bryce Coon, we're saying so long from Clemson, South Carolina. The Tigers win it 10 to 1.